here we are given some time domain signal and we're asked a series of questions starting with a sketch of the signal in the time domain and then finding the signal in the frequency domain. So the first question is simply to sketch x of t. So x of t looks like it's the product of a one-sided decaying exponential and a unit step. So the unit step simply means that we're looking at the positive time axis. So everything in the negative time will be zero. So e to the minus a t, now if we assume a is positive, e to the minus a t is going to be a decaying exponential. So it will start at e to the power 0 is 1, and it will decay as such. So that's the first part. Second part is to find x of omega. So here it's directly asking for the frequency domain representation. So that means the Fourier transform. So we're trying to find x of omega. The definition of the Fourier transform is an integration across all time of x of t times e to the minus i omega t dt. So all we need to do is replace x of t with um, that and then carry out the integration. So I can replace x of t with e to the minus a t. u of t is simply 1, so I can either write 1 or simply remove it and replace the limit of the integration, the lower limit, to 0, because u of t is a, only 1 from 0 to infinity. So I can remove that and I can put a zero there. Oops, so that's my integration now. So now you've got the independent variable t that we're integrating over appears twice here. So it makes sense to add these exponents together. So we'll have integration from zero to infinity e to the power t into minus a minus i omega dt. So the integral of that remains the same. Let's write it like this a plus i omega and then we divide by let's call it a plus i omega and put a minus sign and that's from zero to infinity now remember that e to the power minus infinity approaches zero and e to the power 0 equals 1. We can now write the answer as minus 1 over a plus i omega into 0 minus 1. So that gives you 1 over a plus i omega. So that's your Fourier transform, x of omega. So that is your solution to the second part. Now the next part says hence, that means using the result we just found up here, find 
the Fourier transform of that. So rather than integrating again, we can simply use the result we just found, but using 8 instead of a. So if this was part b, for part c, we can say um, x of omega equals 1 over 8 plus i omega. So we've simply replaced the a with the constant 8. And this function was called f, so really we should call that f of omega. Now for part d, same question, this time the function's called g, and we have that same function, and then we have another function here with a different constant, 3, and we've got this constant here, a scaling factor. So it's a linear operation, so we can simply... Um, so integration is linear, so because we've got two terms added together, I can simply add the Fourier transforms. So I can say g of omega equals 1 over 8 plus i omega minus 2 times 1 over 3 plus i omega. And I got the 2 and the 3 from the 2 and the 3 there. So that's your answer, but you wouldn't leave it that way. You would try to simplify it. So this will be 1 over 8 plus i omega minus 2 over 3 plus i omega. You would want a common denominator. So it's 3 plus i omega minus 2 into 8 plus i omega divided by the product. And that simplifies, I guess, two. So you've got 16 and 3, and you've got i omega minus 2 i omega, so it'll be minus 13 minus i omega into 8 plus i omega 3 plus i omega. And you can leave the denominator like that, that's fine. So that would be your final answer.